Good evening, folks. Look at that. I'm just printing out tonight's scope as we speak. It's just literally finished printing off, hot off the press. How are we, everybody? Good evening. Going to uh, let people take a few minutes to join. For those who are joining for the first time, haven't got a clue who I am, never clapped eyes on me before and don't know how they've got here. My name is Ross. Uh, I'm an actor from Manchester in the UK and I scope twice a week. People are joining. I couldn't see who joined then. Lee's here. Phil Gwilliam is, uh, is here as well. Uh, yeah, I scope twice a week, guys. Uh, once on a Monday night, which is tonight, and I do something called Motivation and Mind Hacks, Girly Whirly. The Internet Police Unit are here. Jennifer Hannah's here as well. Um, uh, yeah, so it's twice a week. Monday is Motivation and Mind Hacks, which is tonight where we look at something that's going to uh, well, give you that motivation, going to help you hack your... Uh, Hack your mind, get further in your life faster. Uh, Nina's here as well. Good evening, Nina. Um, and then on Wednesday, we do a book club, guys. This week's book club, Hipster's here. Good evening, Hipster. How are we doing? Girly Whirly, good evening. This week's book is something called The Happiness Advantage by Sean Aker. Uh, we've looked at two chapters of this so far. We're going to look at a um, another chapter uh, on Wednesday night, and then we uh, will do one more chapter the week after. We do a book a month. Um, if you want to look at any of the archives for any of these scopes, if you go to actonthis.tv, it's a website that I run primarily for actors, but this stuff applies to everybody, actonthis.tv, click in the Periscope section and you can watch another 111 Periscopes. Uh, Carol, good evening, this is scope number 112. Uh, how are we? Nina says, all oh, the trolls are here too. I saw one, Nina, um, I'm guessing they'll get bored, but we can we deal with that. Uh, we can kick kick the trolls, and the trolls aren't seen on the replay. So if you're missing the replay, you're missing some obscene language here. And so, <laughs> but it's uh, but it's all good. We're open to free speech. Um, how's everybody doing? Are you all right? How I missed out on um, last Wednesday's book club with you guys because I was actually interviewing um, a phenomenal actress called Ruth Madeley. She was BAFTA nominated at this year's BAFTAs. She was up against Saran Jones, Sheridan Smith, and Claire Foy for the leading actress BAFTA. She lost out to Saran Jones, but it's no, uh, you know, it's not really that much of a hardship losing out to someone uh, as good as Saran. Um, and I did an interview with her in Media City. Um, it's actually, oh, you know what? Might be able to give you a. Uh, just finished editing it, just as a reward for you guys. Let's see if I can give you a little bit of a sneak peek of uh, of the interview. This is going to go live on Act On This tomorrow or the day after. Who's that? Who's that there? Come on, play. Maybe the internet, because I'm scoping as well. It's just not having it. Come on, YouTube. Play. And you'll see Ruth. Oh, so we're just talking about when we were going to go in for the audition. Good evening, Warren, for Don't Take My Baby, which was the uh, drama that Ruth was nominated for the lead actress BAFTA in. We talk all about um, the audition process. It involves self-tapes, in-person meetings, an eight-hour day at RADA. Uh, Ruth's uh, faced a lot of adversity in her life. She's got something called spina bifida. She's got scoliosis as well, which is curvature of the spine. She's in a wheelchair 90% of her life, very limited mobility. Um, and we talk all about that. We talk about the issues that I've got with my eyes. You know, I'm partially sighted. I've got issues with that and just kind of what that means in the acting industry. Um, how she's overcome all of her adversity. Um, and what it's like to be nominated for a BAFTA when you've never even been to drama school. <laughs> so there you go. So all you guys out there who are hung up on the fact you aren't classically trained, screw it, let's do it. You don't need to be. Uh, Anna, good evening. Um, so tonight's scope, guys, this is an interesting one. We've been here once before, long, 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 long time ago, and I wanted to revisit this because I think, I think my opinion on it's changed a little bit, and I want to get your... Um, Bad eyesight means you need to know your lines. It definitely does, Phil. <laughs> Story of my life, that, mate. Story of my life. Yes, it absolutely does. Um, yeah, we uh, we did look at this a few months ago. Um, but like, Well, actually, no, maybe it was about a year ago. Um, but my opinion on this has kind of changed. And it, it, it's all about the advice. One question I, I ask in every interview that I do to every super successful guest or just any guest is that what if you could go back in time and visit, I say your 20 year old self, because I normally interview people, you know, kind of 30 to 40, 50, um, you know, so they've lived a little bit longer. But even if you're very young, what if you could go back in time and visit your 16 year old self, knowing everything that you know now, what advice would you have for your 16 year old self? And there's a book I've just ordered, and I want to read you some excerpts out of it tonight. There's a great book. 
you can get on Amazon and it's called um, Dear Me, A Letter to My 16 Year Old Self. It's by Simon and & Schuster and it's a collection of really super successful celebrities um, in the acting industry, in the music industry, in the sports arena, um, who have all written themselves uh, letters to their 16 year old selves. And I think there's a lot of wisdom in there for all of us, because these are super successful people. I want to read you some letters tonight. I want to read you one from Linda LaPlante, um, started off life as an actress. Carol says she can't think that far back. <laughs> I need this book, says Anna. Uh, nothing comes for free. Uh, it's, the book's great, honestly. Well, I'm going to do it probably for the book club in September. Um, so, uh, oh no, August, isn't it? It's not even, bloody hell, it's not even August yet. Yeah, I'll do it in two weeks, Anna. So if you, if you don't want to get the book, I can uh, I can read it you uh, on the book club. But yeah, I want to look at Linda LaPlante's letters tonight. That was a really interesting one. Uh, we've also got James Nesbitt, great actor. Uh, Patsy Kensit's quite an interesting one. Brenda Blethyn, another actress. Uh, Ignore other people's negative career advice and don't train at a certain drama school, says Warren. That's that's his advice for his 16-year-old self. Interesting one. Don't train at a certain drama school. (laughs) Will he let us know which one that is? We've got Alan Carr's letter here. Um, And we've got um, Elton John's. Elton's a bit of a legend. There's one man who's had a fair bit of success. It's Elton, isn't it? Um, So I want to read you a couple... And then, and then let's have a little chat about what advice we would. The poor school, says Warren. Don't go there. I've not got Steve Coogan's, Anna. I, um, I don't know if he did one, but if he did, I'll find it, because he's a bit of a, uh, you know, bit, Alan Partridge, a bit of a hero of mine. So I want to read you Linda LaPlante. First of all, you know who Linda LaPlante is? Started off life as an actress, got into writing and producing, ended up writing some of the biggest dramas on the planet, the whole Prime Suspect series. Um, I'm sure you all know who she is. Probably one of the most famous writer, novelists in the land. Um, her, her letter is quite interesting because she followed our journey. You know, she started off life as an actress and she says something in it which is quite interesting um, about acting being her first passion but wasn't actually it ended up being the thing that she absolutely loved i had a mate who went last there warren he had the same advice oh so he went to the poor school as well warren lee says and didn't have a great time so here we go let me read you linda's letter first of all a letter to linda okay she says uh as i think back to you my 16 year old self i want to give you advice but i'm finding it hard to do so because nothing I have ever done was on anyone else's advice, so maybe I should just encourage you to follow your dreams. Oh God, Jen says she worked with actors who went there, he said the same. Poor school, he's not getting good ratings tonight. Um, Phil says he'd tell myself to make sure to have a trade or skill, you're gonna need to earn money while resting. Awesome, um, right, um, keep keep your um, your ideas coming guys, but I'm not gonna be able to read these as, as I'm reading this. Um, so um, let's share all our advice after these letters because I want it I don't want to miss it I want to hear it all so he says if you want to if you want something bad enough and are prepared to work towards the end result it will happen and that's super valuable looking back at you now when she was when she was 16 you're just about to get on that train from Liverpool to London to take up your RADA scholarship leaving that undiagnosed dyslexia and stressful schoolwork behind you never imagining where the journey will take you Stand by for some tough talk as you walk through the acting part of your life. The principle of RADA, hear this out guys, the principle of RADA will tell you that you're too small, not attractive enough, and will only be a character actress who gets to work in her 40s. Don't worry though, because at the stage door of the Liverpool Playhouse in a few years time, you'll get the chance to tell him to F off, in between bows for your role, um, as a beauty opposite Anthony Hopkins, that will feel great. <laughs> That's pretty sweet, isn't it? That must be must be a great time in a life. Acting will be the first thing you succeed at, although never your great passion. But it will lead you to your destiny. So try hard to trust in that. I'm getting a I'm getting a phone call here off Chris Chris Stone. Chris Stone, I'm cancelling that just while I'm doing this periscope. He should be on the periscope. What's he doing? Um, During filming on The Gentle Touch in your 30s with Jill Gascoigne, you'll ask to submit some stories that might be a little less boring and you won't know quite what possessed you to do so. You'll probably remember your father keeping that small note written by Linda Titchmarsh 
with a story about a naughty girl who stole a bicycle and fell off it, and reflect on how you'll always, how you've always been a storyteller really. You won't get any of those stories accepted, but you will treasure the comment written across one of them, this is brilliant, and use it to spur you on. You will rewrite that story, rename it Widows, and send it to a producer you know called Verity Lambert, and you will use your married name, Linda LaPlante, and you will laugh when she says that she thought that sounded like a transvestite trucker. <laughs> Interesting. You will get a series commissioned, realise that you don't know what on earth to do now, and find inspiration and direction through the power of research and talking to the people you're trying to write. The buzz you will get from building the scripts will be more enjoyable than anything you've done before and that's when you'll know that you've found what you want to do for your whole life. You'll find that writing will lead you to producing TV, that TV will lead you to novels and that you will still, years on, love what you do. May you never cease to be amazed at the support of the fans and the level of your success. May you leave no stone unturned and fight for what you want in a script because you'll never stop having to do so. May you always have belief in and respect for yourself and know that work is pleasure. May you feel, as I do now, that every day is special and despite the heartaches, and you will have them, you will see that they are minuscule compared to your constant joy of being able to earn your living doing exactly what you find fulfilling. Love to you, Linda, from Linda. P.S. Just remembered, you hate queuing, you always will, so learn to get everywhere early, be it Legoland with your darling son or any other such unthinkable place. Be organised, it really does work in reducing stress and allows you to enjoy life to the max. Don't worry about diets, you'll never be able to sustain one for more than a few days. Finally, try not to smoke. Drink, yes, in moderation, but don't start smoking, whatever you do. If anyone asks, tell them it's because you don't want all those little lines around your mouth. Linda. So that was Linda's. I thought it's funny the fact that she went to RADA and they went, yeah, you're not good looking enough, you're too small and you're only going to get roles in your 40s. And then she just like, just flick a couple of those at you. Chris Stone's finally joined. Chris, you just phoned me. I can't pick up the phone when I'm on a scope, Christoph. Um, but at least it didn't cut the scope off, so that's a yeah, that's a bonus. So that's Linda's advice for herself, which was basically like Helen Mirren. Uh, yeah, Helen Mirren. Um, I imagine has had a, had a very interesting uh, career. She certainly wants to tell it how it is, isn't she? Even if it means running out the back of the theatre and kicking off big time with a turning the air blue. Sorry, I forgot. Just finished your show reel. Thank you, Chris. Chris has been editing my show reel for me today. Appreciate that, mate. I can't wait to, uh, to have a look at that. So, Chris, we were just looking at, um, at letters that famous actors have written to their 16-year-old self, and we just read Linda LaPlante's. She was told at RADA that she was too little, too ugly. She was only going to get roles in her 40s as a character actress. Um, she went on to uh, tell her RADA to F off when she was uh, playing opposite Anthony Hopkins. Um, Sam's here as well. Looks like she's just uploading her showreel to Spotlight, she says. Uh, which is good. So that's that's Linda's advice. Who do you want to hear from next? We've got, I'll let you guys choose. We've got Brenda Blethyn, great actress. We've got Patsy Kensit, actress. Joking, <laughs> great actress. Um, Elton John is a good one. Alan Carr's here as well. Um, and James Nesbitt. James Nesbitt is a good one. Who do you want to hear next? Alan Carr, says Anna. Any more for Alan Carr? Let's have Alan, says Jen. Brenda, she's funny, says Carol. Patsy Kensit, working actress. Right, Carr. It looks like, well, you know what, let's just, just do them all. Let's rock and roll, isn't it? Because we can. We've now, Helen Powers here, she wants James Nesbitt. Mary can't stand James Nesbitt or Alan Carr, but here you go, Mary. If, if, whoever you can't stand, this is for you. <laughs> Dear me, it's Alan Carr. You probably can't read this because you won't have your glasses on. <laughs> Just like me. I know you don't like wearing them, but believe me, you'll grow into them. I'll be honest with you, that isn't puppy fat. <laughs> it stays with you for the next 20 years, looking a bit sorry for itself, hanging over the top of your jeans and wobbling when you giggle. Now I know body slamming your face on a caravan hook. <laughs> I haven't read these till tonight, this is live. <laughs> 
Now, I know body slamming your face on a caravan hook in Great Yarmouth while the holiday wasn't on your to-do list, but funnily enough, the crooked, gappy, chipped, toothy smile might actually be a good thing. Look, don't shoot the messenger. I'm trying to be positive. Anyway, I've got jokes to write, presenting to do, etc. So we'll leave you to it. Keep your chin up. Love, Alan. P.S. By the way, your voice doesn't break either. <laughs> oh, you were getting in mi- Ah, Mary was getting it mixed up with... Um, uh, uh, what's his face? Jimmy Carr. That's who you're getting it mixed up with. Short and sweet. Like him. He's good, Alan, isn't he? He's all right. He's never bothered fixing that crooked smile. It's made him. It's literally made his career. Again, what he thought was probably a weakness has become absolutely one of his strengths. He's, Phil says his brand. It is, isn't it? It's absolutely uh, Alan's brand. Without it, I don't know what he'd be really. Just an average geezer. So that was Alan. Um, someone said Patsy. Um, let's have a look. Patsy is only short, very short actually. Let's read this. Dear 16 year old Patsy, you adore music more than anything in the world. You have a great passion for rock and roll. But that doesn't mean you have to marry the lead singer of every band you ever had a poster on your bedroom wall of. Love your older you, Patsy. Don't take cocaine, says Anna. <laughs> uh, that's Patsy's. Just all about, all about marrying geezers from rock and roll bands, isn't she? Bless her. She's not had a lot of luck with that. Um, Brenda Bleffin. Let's check her out. It's quite a long one, Brenda. Where does it start, Brenda? Where do you begin, love? Uh, on the bottom of Patsy's. Here we go. Here's Brenda's. Took yourself in. Oh, it's not that long, actually. It's a little bit longer than Patsy's, though. Dear Brenda, so you don't have a proper pair of shoes and your clothes aren't very fashionable, but believe me, things will get a whole lot better. And there's nothing wrong with being shy, even though you do your best to cover for it. Your grades at college weren't very good in the first year, were they? But that's only because you're worrying about mum and dad. I know they're much older than your friend's parents and seem to be arguing a lot lately. All parents do but I'll bet not everyone's parents laugh as much together as yours do. So please stop being so morbid because they're gonna be around for a long time yet. Would you believe me if I said your life was gonna take a different course altogether from the one you're currently planning, although the shorthand and typing will come in very handy, whatever you do. My hands are whizzing across the keyboard now, especially if you ever come to write a book. It's not such a far-fetched idea. Listen, Brenda, Don't try so hard to be liked. The sooner you learn that some people won't like you, the better. And remember that your opinion is just as valuable as anybody else's. Don't be embarrassed if you get things wrong. Everybody gets things wrong. Dad was right when he said there's nothing wrong with failure, only with not trying. Good advice, Brenda's dad. This is a good one. Oh, dearest Brenda, I know you'll never ask for the moon and stars, and you're blessed for it. You will work hard in life, but I promise you that if you stand on tippy toes, you will reach whatever you crave. Put the chocolate on the top shelf. That's a great quote, isn't it? Put the chocolate on the top shelf. And finally, um, a shoe pretension. If you want any more advice, little Bren, you can contact me via agent Sally Longinis at Independent Talent London. Keep smiling with affection, Brenda. Sally's a great agent as well, you know. If you get representation off Sally, you're winning. Um, so yeah, so put so Brenda's advice: reach for the stars, put the chocolate on the top shelf. Where's your chocolate right now? Mine's in my belly. Um, so that's Brenda's. Um, I'll leave Elton's till last. Who else have we got knocking around here? James Nesbit. Brenda's good, but in little voice she overacted, in my opinion. Whereas Michael Caine played under her. I think uh, I think that's said there. I missed missed a bit of that comment there. Um, Jimmy Nesbit, what do you think of Jimmy? Generally, always plays the drunk, angry dad whose child has been murdered, but he plays it bloody well, doesn't he? James Nesbit, oh, this is great. It's one line. <laughs> Dear James, stay in more. Keep off the smokes and tell your parents you love them, James. Pretty simple, basically. I think the last, the last uh, part is good. Tell your parents you love them. I think we should all uh, say that more often. Not a fan of Jimmy, but the missus likes him, says Phil. 
Yeah, I think he's. I think he's good. He's got. You know, he's got his shtick, hasn't he? His thing is that father on the edge. I'll take on the world. Kill me if you want. But he does it. Does it pretty well. It's the accent in it, though. I think when you've got an accent and you want to be rough and kind of like aggressive or like whatever, you just put on. You know, you either need a Scottish or an Irish accent. And you're menacing as hell, aren't you? You'll take on anybody. My old man was Scottish. Trust me, that's how it works. Wish you had one from Robin Williams, says Anna. Do you know what? I've ordered the book, Anna. I don't know how many people are in this book. Um, but if it's there, we'll, uh, we'll read it. Um, does it for me, says Helen. Helen. Maybe she means Jimmy. Jimmy Nesbitt. Um, right, okay. Got a couple more. Should we read... <laughs> it's nothing to do with accent at all, but we've got Hugh Fernley Witt installs here. <laughs> um, bit of a mentalist. Dear Hugh, my advice to you is to learn to say no to things that simply cannot be done properly in the limited time available. Yours, Hugh, age 44. Hugh Fernley Witt install, Anna. He's like, um, he's, he's like a chef, does a lot of nature stuff, goes out and just cooks eggs in a field, stuff like that. Um, does a lot of kitchen stuff. I think his advice is actually still very, uh, very decent advice. Hugh Fernley Whittingstall. She's going Hugh who? Uh, yeah, say no to things that cannot be done properly in the limited time available. Sometimes saying no to stuff is so much better than saying yes to everything. Don't fall into that trap of going, I've got to say yes to everything because this is what I do. Um, you'll end up inevitably having to say no to a lot of other things by saying yes to stuff. Pick very wisely what you say yes to. I'm not telling you, Lee's saying who's, who's Hugh. I've said it five times, Lee. You're winding me up, I know he is. Um, right, guys, let's let's end on Elton's before we share our own advice for each other. And then and then I want to set you a challenge. I would love it if people would do this because I, I would love to create. Oh, I'm going to tell you at the end. Please stay on this scope, though till the end I wanted to be involved with something that I want to produce and I can't well I just can't do it without you <laughs> effectively literally can't do it without you Elton Johns this is a good one I'm, well I'm saying that I'm not ready yet but here we go dear Reg uh, does Elton's involve cooking oil says Phil hey Phil it might do who knows mate let's let's have a look he's called himself Reg because his name's Reg, Reg Dwight isn't it so dear Reg you're a very young 16 you know no oh it might do actually uh, here Phil you know nothing about sex. You don't even know what queer is. Trust me when I tell you though, you are queer. You are a gay boy. I made this mistake. Uh, I made the mistake of not having sex until I was 23. I loved being with another man and felt relieved, oh God, and felt relieved that, maybe it is get the cookie oil out, and felt relieved that I finally knew who I was. I made the mistake of falling in love too soon because I was naive and romantic. My advice to you is this is important this is this is, this is good advice my advice to you is never to chase love it will find you when you least expect it have fun have lots of safe sex and enjoy your sexuality in certain countries we are still not treated as equals especially by the so-called christian church i made a lot of mistakes stay away from drugs they're a waste of time Stand up for every human being's rights. Be loving, kind and strong. Set an example. You're going to have a hell of a life. Love you, Elton. P.S. Change your name. Change it from Reg to Elton. That's great advice about love, though. Don't chase that. that that'll just find you. Says the man who's knocking around on Tinder every day. <coughs> swiping right. I'm only joking. Actually, I'm not even joking. Good on Elton, says Ruth. Um, definitely good advice so that's just a few so this book which is titled letters uh, which is titled Dear Me a letter to my 16 year old self Chris Stone says I'm the Tinder King mate I'm getting pretty good at it <laughs> I'll be honest Anna's saying she's on plenty of fish now, I find Bumble's a good one Bumble's a good one because the, the women have to make the first message it's not a dating show anyway um, but yeah so uh, I'm going to get this book it's coming tomorrow I've ordered it off Amazon today and I'll um, I'll be able to read you guys uh, Anna says she's not on Plenty of Fish now um, <laughs> Phil says don't mistake it for Grinder though there's so many there's so many of these dating things by the sound of things uh, Ruth met her man on Plenty of Fish boom get in there Ruth um, so yeah so it's interesting isn't it 
when you're hearing from people like that, give their, you know, their advice, their best advice off, what would your advice be to your 16 year old self now? Mine would be definitely there's been a paradigm shift in, um, in my, in my thinking for uh, the eye condition that I've got. Chris says I should start a dating site for actors. Nah, forget that, nonsense. Um, yeah, so I've got something called retinitis pigmentosa, which is a, de a degenerative retinal condition where your peripheral vision from like your teens starts coming in until you're left like blinkered. I can't drive, I've struggled in, in dim vision as well, in dim lighting. Um, and I thought it would be absolutely the one thing that uh, would hold me back in my career, without a doubt. I used to hide it from people, I'd try and get away with it. If I'd fall over stuff or kick stuff, I'd blame it on being clumsy as opposed to going, look, I've got a problem, you know, I've got this thing. I don't think people would kind of want to employ me. Um, and I still did pretty well, regardless of that. And then two years ago, Jack Thorne, one of the best writers we've got in the country, wrote a drama about somebody with my condition. And that opened up the biggest casting opportunity and just the biggest opportunities that are still actually happening today because of that condition. It was the one thing I thought would hold me back. Ironically, has given me the biggest, the, the biggest opportunities that I've ever had. So for me, I would say to everybody, um, Ruth says, abbreviated version is live every moment of your life and be happy, uh, which is great advice. Um, but yeah, for me would be don't, don't preempt what people are gonna think. You know, don't, don't kind of uh, sort of predict how people will take you if you tell them you have a problem. You know, ask for help and you'll get it. And ironically, your greatest, what you think is probably your biggest flaw, will become your greatest asset in a way, which is uh, which is crazy. I think we have a time, we have time to, sometimes we just kind of, you know, predict all these negative circumstances that never happen. Take time to get to know my dad, tell him I love him more and forgive him earlier, says Lee. Yeah, I mean, my, I lost my old man when I was 24. Um, and that was really shit because I felt like, you know, I don't know, at that, at that point when you're kind of like 24 as a, as a man, you have a different relationship with your dad than you had growing up when you were kind of, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20 because, you know, there's almost kind of, you think you've got something to prove to your old man, don't you? Like, I'm a man too, but you, know, you mellow out a lot when you're in your like, towards your mid 20s. It's the time when you probably start going to the pub with your old man and that, you know, we were just kind of doing that and then he died, I was like, shit. Um, so yeah, I would definitely uh, say spend more time with your family, um, definitely. Very important, Anna says she lost her dad five years ago. Uh, my advice, do the things that scare you, says Helen. Be brave and get uncomfortable, you may surprise yourself. So important, I tell, I've just literally been speaking to someone tonight about getting comfortable with getting uncomfortable. Don't get married until you're at least in your mid-20s, says Carol. Do what you want, not what others want. It's the second most common regret of the dying, that Carol. Live a life, it sounds morbid, doesn't it? But there's five of the most common regrets in human beings. And number two is live the life that you want to live, not the life you, you think other people expect of you. Um, so yeah, it's very, very important. The first one is, is uh, the, the biggest regret is that I wish I had realized earlier that happiness was a choice. That's the biggest regret of everybody, of every human being on the on the planet. Uh, the most common regret of people dying on their deathbeds is that they wish they had realised earlier that happiness is a choice. Okay, it's very powerful when you realise that that you genuinely do have the power of choice over how you react to every situation in your life. Ultimately, every situation that happens in your life is neutral, whether it's the you know the highest of highs or the lowest of lows. It only becomes a high or a low with the meaning you put onto it. And if you choose to put a negative meaning onto it, it will become a negative experience and you'll always remember it as that and it can create many limiting beliefs within you right now that you're probably still living, that you may have created 20 to 25 years ago. When you feel, you know, when you realize you have a choice to, to react differently to that situation, you can gain your power back. Don't think you have to be perfect, except that you are flawed, says Sam. Um, Anna says Buddhism is highly recommended. <laughs> wow, I don't know anything about Buddhism, Anna. Um, but that's interesting. Yeah, post it in the Facebook group if you've got anything you think is uh, is interesting. Um, definitely. But what I want to do, guys, this is what I want to do. I would love because you know I'm kind of like big on creating eBooks and stuff like that. Um, I want to create a free eBook for actors. Um, 
that is this effectively, but from, you know, not as famous actors, because we're not all famous actors yet. We will be incredibly well known for our craft very shortly. Um, but I would love for, you know, uh, to create a book for actors start, just starting out. They want to learn from people who, you know, are just a few steps ahead of them or whatever. I would love to create an ebook that's got excerpts of all this from all of us, where we, we, you know, I would like everybody to write a letter to their 16 year old self. It might only be a paragraph, a sentence like Phil Nesbit, uh, uh, thingy Nesbit was, uh, James Nesbit was. Um, and I would love to collate them, I'll create an ebook, and then we'll give it away through apps on this, um, so that people can, you know, can read that on the way to auditions or, or whatever it is that they're going to, to just, you know, make them realize that they're human as well you know I think it'd be a really cool idea and I will obviously credit everybody for it um, and we'll just send it out into the world without ripple effects people hopefully will pass it on pass it on and maybe we'll revise it in the future we'll add to it um, but it would be amazing if you are interested in doing that two ways um, you can get involved the first one is to join our Facebook group and that's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash act on this TV um, and you can just post your letter to your 16 year old self. Um, we need to come up with a hashtag guys, what should we have for it? Like my 16 year old self. Dear my 16 year old self, let's have that as, uh, as a hashtag with the number 16, not spelt as a thingy, it'll be shorter then. Do you think it's too long, Ruth? Well, what should we have then? Or just maybe my 16 year old self? Uh, dear 16, dear teenager, uh, it says, I know, maybe that's too long as well, I don't know. Maybe you could even have chapters, my advice for auditions, drama schools, other actors. Dear 16, there you go, we've got it. Chris, is, that's short. Hashtag dear 16. Dear 16. Hashtag dear 16. Dear 16. That, that looks good on the on the screen. Um, so let's have that. Um, I don't think we need, to, we need to worry about chapters and things like that. Uh, I think, because you can have an all-encompassing letter then, rather than decompartmentalising it and going, well, this is my advice for audition, this is my advice for this. I think sometimes if you just write a stream of consciousness, you get a really honest look at someone's life. It doesn't have to be all acting related either. Um, it can just be, you know, about the industry in general, about life in general, about just, you know, your experiences. Ultimately, you know, I don't think acting is a mutually exclusive career. Every part of your life affects every part of your life. So everything you're doing in your life is going to oh cut off there as a human being and as an actor. Um, so uh, so yeah, that would be awesome. So you can do that in the Facebook group. How long have we got to do it? Says Jen. Um, I mean, as long as you want, really. Ideally, if we say we keep it open for like two weeks and then I'll collate it all, or maybe even a week to make people do it, keep people accountable. Um, so you can put it in the Facebook group, or you can, if you don't want to put it in the Facebook group, you can email me, and it's just help at acts on this TV, um, and I'll get that as well. Just put in the subject title, dear sixteen, so I uh, I get to see that, and I know uh, I know what it is. Um, but yeah, I think it's a pretty cool idea. I'll do it as well. Um, don't overthink it, please. It doesn't have to be perfect. Done is better than perfect. Like I say, I think it's nice if it's honest, stream of consciousness, things that you would really value had you known then would have made your life easier um, and it can be about any part of your life but yeah let's um, let's also you know put the acting career stuff in there as well um, and just you know things that you think someone starting out in the industry would really benefit from if they knew that word limit so we don't rabbit on too much um, Nina you know what I, I'll let people just choose choose what they want because uh, I mean some of these were were much longer than others but ultimately I'm gonna be copying and pasting it so uh, yeah, I don't think, I mean, Anna's got a thousand there. Most articles on Acts on This, you'd be surprised how, how many words a thousand uh, is, Anna. It's a lot, a thousand. Most articles I write for Acts on This, at the most, are 700. And they're pretty long. Uh, so I would say between, you know, anywhere up to 700. Five, around 500 is probably, uh, is probably great. Um, but, you know, I'd say, yeah, up to about 700. I mean, if you want to write absolutely loads and loads and loads, um, you can do. Um, be mindful if you're writing loads about spelling and grammar so I don't have to go through and, <laughs> and check it all. <laughs> Sometimes people submit articles to the site that are great but their, their spelling and grammar is not great and it sometimes takes me just as long almost like I could have just written the article myself by the time I've gone through it and corrected stuff. Um, it's got to be grammatically correct but don't get hung up on that either. 
all right? I don't want people to go, oh, well, maybe I'm dyslexic, so I won't write it then. Don't worry about it. I, I, you know, I can and will change that and, you know, and uh, make sure it is all right. I can proofread, proofread for you, says Ruth. Excellent. Uh, good work, Ruth. If we put them in the, um, in the Facebook group, though, you know, we can, uh, you know, people can edit, moderators can edit posts uh, in the group and, uh, and sort that out. Um, so, yeah, so that would be awesome. Please get involved. That would be fantastic. Let's hashtag it, Dear16. Um, and I'll be back on Wednesday, guys, uh, like I say, with uh, Book Club. Dear 16 is seven characters long, so how about encapsulating it for the Twitter general 133 letters? Um, Phil, your your Dear 16. I mean, that's you'll find most hashtags are probably longer than that on Twitter. Um, I think that's probably short enough um, and gets the, the the point across for you know for kind of what it is. I think that's pretty pretty cool. Um, so yeah, get it out on Twitter as well and. Um, and let's get, get everybody taking part, which would be, uh, be awesome. Uh, so I'll be back with the Happiness Advantage on Wednesday. Um, Sean Aker's book. If you've not got this, get this. This is literally, well, it could change your life, this book. Seven Principles That Fuel Success and Performance at Work. Literally by hacking your brain almost uh, for happiness so you're more motivated, you're more um, inspired, you're going to get more work done. Um, so uh, join me for that on Wednesday night, 10 p.m., um, thank you so much for watching. If you've been watching on the replay, really appreciate you uh, for spending some time with us. All the hearts going through. Cheers, Warren. Um, sleep well, everybody. And um, yeah, I'll be back on Wednesday. But please, Dear 16, get it in the Facebook group. Let's create a, um, a great book and, and help loads of people. Oh, I mean, the advice after Dear 16 should be 133 letters, so it fills Twitter. Oh, right, we could do that, Phil. Um, but for the ebook, it can be longer than that. But yeah, I can take excerpts out definitely to tweet. That's uh, that's that's a cool idea as well. Um, so uh, so yeah, just whatever you want. There's no hard and fast rules. I'm just happy for people to take part and get involved with it. Whatever you want to do, do it. Get out there and make a difference. Um, Chris, I will ring you now. Thanks for cutting my reel, mate. And I'll see you guys very very soon. See if we can end this elegantly. Um, cheers, Phil. Thanks for uh, for joining us tonight, buddy. There we go. Awesome. Ready to stop. Thanks a lot, guys. Sleep well. Bye for now.